Hey, hey guys. guys, welcome back to Faith Over Fear podcast. So I'm excited for today. We're going to be talking about endurance and like endurance in your walk, you know, with God. And I want to start off with a post that I saw on Facebook of Rebecca de Leon. She posted it and she she posted. I, I want to share it because I feel like it spoke to my exact situation. Mm-hmm. And it's it's the verse Isaiah 48 10 and it says I have refined you but not as silver is refined rather I have refined you in the furnace of suffering and then she put learn to embrace your suffering as through it God is refining you and you will become the person God intended you to be to fulfill his purposes in your life Wow. yeah Because I feel like lately I've been going through it, (laughs) not me just pouring out my whole life, but I feel like I've been, I've been going through it, you know, but I feel like God has been putting me through it. And I was like, wow, like he's putting me through the fire of suffering, you know, but it's worth it. Like in the end, it's going to be worth it, you know? So that's why we wanted to talk about endurance because in the walk, it's hard like I've talked about it it's hard and I feel like the reason I've been saying that it's hard is because I'm currently struggling you know but through the process it's important to keep your eyes on Jesus primarily you know but like be in like invested in him you know so he can give you the strength to endure through the trials because the trials are gonna come from every direction you know and also there's this song called joy in the morning and in the song it says if it's not good then he's not done Mm -hmm. you know yeah and I feel like that also inspired this topic because if if a situation in your life right now is not good he's not done Mm -hmm. he's still working you know and just through the process like it's important to stay focused and stay determined you know because it may look like everything in your life is going wrong, you know, but God has a purpose and God is working. Kind of like when gold is being refined, it's literally going through the fire so it can be shiny gold, you know? Yeah. So like that, like I should be excited because God chose me. God considered me to put me through that because he has something greater, you know? No, yeah, I think um, endurance is such a great word when it comes to like this walk, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And it's funny because whenever um, the way that we kind of like talk about our topics, we like text it to each other like, oh, is there anything that you have in mind? Mm -hmm. And whenever she said endurance, um, this Bible verse came up in the, you know, Bible verse of the day. Mm -hmm. And it's in Hebrews 12, um, chapter 12, verse 1. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us trips us up, and let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. Mm. So I feel like with this one, like, you know, it, it has the word endurance, but I feel like this verse kind of like does talk about like, our walk in God and having that mindset of endurance. You know what I mean? Because I feel like it kind of talks about it. Like it's true. Like, you know, there is moments of we're surrounded by witnesses to the life of faith. And we do have to, you know, like let us strip off every weight that slow us down. So I feel like with endurance, you're walking, but then there's moments that we have to tell God, like, be, uh, you know literally strip of strip of me all that's slowing me down yeah you know what i mean because that can cause you to stop walking Mm -hmm. and it can stop your walk in general yeah and that's where it gets hard for us to have that endurance in our walk yeah you know what i mean so i feel like and then also it's you know just like it says like especially the sin that easily trips us up Mm -hmm. you know what i mean so Yeah, I always like to tell God to play to shine his light in the deepest, darkest parts of my heart, you know, because I want to become the best version of myself, you know. So with that prayer comes, you know, (laughs) trials and stuff. (laughs) So all that stuff can be shed off, you know. So, I mean, obviously I asked for it 
like I can't complain about what I'm going through because I asked for it, you know, like, mm-hmm. and I mean, I know that in the end, God has a greater purpose, you mm-hmm. know, and it's all going to be worth it, you know, so I guess what I'm trying to say is during your trials and during your walk, when you feel like everything is just not aligning how you want it to, like, remember that God is working and remember that he has a plan, you know, and hold on to that, like, hold on to it with your whole life, because the devil's going to throw a lot of stuff in our minds. And we talk about warfare a lot, but it's, it's so real, you know, and I feel like when I was coming in, like, I didn't even know what spiritual warfare meant. Yeah. Like I literally looked up like what is spiritual warfare? Because like we don't know, yeah. you know, but it's so real. Like we live in a spiritual world and like we need to be ready to like fight that, you know? Because it's very real and so hold on to the fact that God is working and God literally has us in the palm of his hand, you yeah. know? And keep walking like don't stop don't give the devil what he wants that kind of keeps me going too because i'm like you really think right now like there's no way you're gonna win like i'm not letting you win and that literally pushes me because i'm like there's no way the devil's gonna win you know so that's what keeps me going like just hold on to god is literally working he never leaves us and he has a so many blessings for us you know but you have to keep going and endure you know because it gets really hard it gets really really hard and you experience things that you never even thought you would ever experience Mm -hmm. you know but god literally gives us strength he is our strength you know yeah and i feel like with me and my walk with endurance like it has been like knowing because like my faith has been faith that i had to develop on my own with god so i feel like because i had that privilege of having that one-on-one um you know with god i feel like that's what kind of helped me through the difficult situations because it just reminds me i'm here because of literally who he is yeah you know what i mean and so you know going back to that episode if you haven't watched it you can watch it of the privilege of knowing who god is and not what he can give us Mm -hmm. has been my strength of like am I really going to, um, actually I wanted to pause and mention the, uh, I don't know if you saw this post that, uh, brother Orlando, he put that he says like, don't make God's heart sad to please yours, to mm. satisfy yours, something along the lines. I wish mm-hmm. I would have screenshotted it, but I feel like that's my situation. Like, you know, I know how God is for me and he is my dad that I don't want to disappoint him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like there's moments where like, I want to give in, you know, how they say, like throw in the towel. But I just think of how that could make God sad. It just makes me sad. You know what I mean? Like, am I really going to please my heart and make his sad? Yeah. You know what I mean? And so I feel like now I keep that into mind. Like, oh, like, you know, why am I pleasuring my heart? Like, no, like I want to pleasure your heart. Like I want to please you. Like I want you to be happy with me. You know what I mean? But what I love with God is that happiness is not us being perfect. Mm -hmm. Happiness, we bring him joy whenever we go to him with our burdens, whenever we go to him and give it to him, that makes him joyful, you know, and we visit him at his house and we praise him and we worship him. But at the same time, like whenever we fall, like he just hugs you and tells you like i'm here like you know and i feel like that's why i haven't given in the towel like it's not because oh he has blessed me with this and he has blessed me with that like no he just has blessed me with his presence he has blessed me with being my father like you know just like i always love to be um open you know i'm going through it right now and there was some and there um i was telling krista it's funny like because we always have conversations (laughs) before we start filming and so like i'm literally going through it right now with a certain situation where on my drive here god hugged me and said i forgive you and like i cry because i'm like but god i don't deserve it you know i'm not worthy of this forgiveness he was like i forgive you because you're my daughter and i love you and like i just started praising him and i started speaking in tongues and crying and bawling and imagine doing that while you're driving right (laughs) 
<laughs> but it's just kind of like jesus took the wheel yeah literally <laughs> jesus took the wheel and i'm just kind of like god like i love you so much because who does that you yeah. know what i mean who does that when you don't deserve it but that's and that's who god is yeah god is a god that says i forgive you mm -hmm. that's why he, he thought of you on the cross and yeah. that's why he did it because he had you specifically you in mm -hmm. mind you know what i mean and so that's what has helped me through it through the difficult times where it's just kind of like i'm not at my church to because i need to look good for the members i need to look good for the pastor Or for, you know, even my parents, like, like, it's funny because I don't know if I, um, if you're okay, because I think, I don't know if you mentioned this in an episode, how you said, like, no one would technically hold you accountable if you stop going or not going. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so, like, now I do. Like, now my mom, you know, praise God, she's she, she helps me with my walk now, right? And so, but back then, there will be moments where it's like, no one would literally care if I leave or if I don't. Yeah. And so now I praise God that I have my mom, I have my pastor, I have members at the church that, you know, pray for me. And I feel like in that moment, whenever in the moment that I was saying you guys that I was driving here, I felt it in my spirit that God told me, someone is praying for you. Wow. And so I'm just kind of like wow like you know praise god because i feel it that someone is praying for me and that's why i'm getting like i'm not falling deeper into this hole you know what i mean and so that's why like you know we encourage you have those friendships have those mentors have those people surrounding you because those people are helping you to get closer to god you know yeah. what i mean and so um I feel like that's why, like, for me, I've been so long here in the walk because I it's not so much of like, oh, you know, it's moral or whatever. No, like it's literally a lifestyle. It's literally just like you need mom, dad, sister, siblings, whatever. Like you I need God. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I need God, even if I had everything just um, but, you know, like. But God would still be like that firm foundation. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that's just my experience. With no, it. yeah. And it's it's important to, to have the relationship, you know, because mm -hmm. that's that's honestly what keeps us going. Yeah. Like, it's not even about church. It's not about, you know, it's about him. Yeah. Like I show up because of him. Yeah. You know, yeah. I read because he literally saved my life. He literally pulled me out of the pit, you know like it's the least i could do yeah and i feel like it's crazy because that's what i'm doing but it's literally helping me yeah you know yeah but it's literally about him yeah and i you literally just said the the secret like it's having a relationship with him is how yeah. you're able to have endurance because if you just go because of like oh it's moral and be or because you know you feel comfortable at your church like you know one day someone's going to disappoint you and is yeah. that going to be all You know what I mean? Or because your parents are making you go and they're the ones that are helping you in your faith. But there's going to be a moment where like you have to separate yourself from all that and just literally know who God is. You know yeah. what I mean? Just know who he is for you because it's something different for everyone. And that's how I feel like, you know, how you can have endurance in the first yeah. place because sometimes you get tired like i'm not gonna lie like it's already been years that i've been going to the church and there's moments where you either fall into a routine or you just feel like oh, this is too much like i've um there has been moments where like i just feel tired like oh my gosh like i have to go so many days and like i have to help in my church in so many aspects and you kind of feel tired but i start analyzing like oh it's because like i need to feed myself more yeah you know what i mean like i get it like yeah you can have like a sabbatical and you can take some rest until your pastor like oh like i'm gonna take a couple of days off or can someone like help you and that's okay you know what i mean yeah. it's okay to take a break but at the same time whenever you start at least for me this is in my walk i've realized that whenever i feel tired is because i need to i need more of god yeah it's not so much like oh you need a vacation like it's like oh my spirit needs to be refreshed yeah hopefully that makes sense yeah yeah and i feel like also um if you're in a position where you feel bad like you always feel bad because you constantly feel like you're failing god literally just talk to him because i feel like the devil makes us feel bad and ourselves like we can't forgive ourselves you know but god literally already forgave us like 
he knew I say this a lot, but he knew exactly what you were going to do before you did it. And he still got on the cross, you know, and I feel like it's something that needs to be put out there because I feel like we get stuck in a mentality where we're like, well, he's not going to forgive me. Like I can't come to him because I failed, you know, and you just feel bad. And kind of like that one podcast you were saying that he was like, he felt like he was always apologizing to God because he was always doing wrong, you know, but I feel like it's not even like that. Like let go of that mentality, literally let go of that mentality. God loves when you come to him. Mm -hmm. He literally delights in you coming to him. He wants you to come to him. He's literally waiting for you to come to him, you know? And we come with like it just explains the warfare again you know like don't let the devil have that hold on you you know like go to god and break the chains you know like um i saw something that said that when the lightness when the light shines the darkness has to flee Mm. you know so when you come to god like be there you know and the darkness has to flee don't don't feel like you you're disappointing god yeah. like just str- move forward you know keep yeah. moving and forgive yourself yeah. you know because i feel like that's what's going to help you get out of that mindset and start something new you know and i feel like sometimes we get so caught up on like oh well like i just keep failing god like i'm just not gonna do anything right. anymore you know i would have left the church years ago if I, that was my mindset literally you know what i mean because technically are we really ever worthy mm-hmm. you know what i mean but he just says come as you are literally. you know what i mean and so i feel like um based on what you said there was a, a preaching that i was listening to um that he was kind of saying like you know be like a hundred percent open with god like it's okay to question him like it's okay to be really real with him because there was a because he was saying like you know for those because it was a a preaching over temptation that he did like a series over that and so he was saying like you know tell god um help me to stop desiring what pleases me like for example if it's like alcohol or drugs like god right now this is pleasing me more than you yeah I'm desiring this more than you. So if you tell that to God, like God, like I'm desiring this more than you, help me to, yeah. to for, for me to desire you more than what's pleasing me. Yeah. You know what I mean? So just be open with him. He's like, okay, you know, like, but if you just kind of like hold it in, like, oh, like this isn't going on. Like he's like, hey, like I already know that this is pleasing you more than me at the moment, yeah. but I can help you. But just be honest with him. Be like, God, like alcohol, you know, relationship, a job or whatever the case may be is pleasing me more than you are so help me guide me you know open doors or do what you got to do to the point where you i desire you more than my temptation than my distraction yeah and it's awesome that you say that because i literally told god at the very beginning of my walk i was like give me the desire to want to read your word yeah you know and I'm I'm glad that I'm such a real person. And I honestly, like, it's because of my mom. Like, my mom is the realest person you will ever meet. And I feel like I got that from her, you know, and I'm very grateful. But, like, because of that, like, I can be raw and real with God. Like, yeah. I told him, give me the desire to want to read your word because I wanted to. But, no, I didn't want to, but I knew I needed to, you yeah. know? Yeah. And now I'm so disciplined in that area, you know, and I tell everyone, read your Bible because the Bible changed my life, you know, but I feel like I had to ask God to give me the desire to read his word. I didn't just be like, oh, like, it's so good. You know, I feel like I didn't even understand it and it was hard, you know, and but he literally gave me that like and now I'm like, read your Bible. I tell everybody, read your Bible because it's it's really yeah. that it, it's yeah. that's what it is I that's don't know. Re- no that's a really great example it's so true like you don't start off this walk oh praying an hour fasting five yeah. times a week reading your bible every single day that is really good and that is a really great testimony for you know for uh from crystal and also for me like you don't start off like having that desire right off the bat you know what Mm -hmm. i mean because we're still flesh yeah tell god like hey like i know the importance of needing to read my bible fast and all that 
let open that desire in me because right now i desire sleep right now i desire like going out with friends being on social media so ask him and tell him like let my spirit uh be the one leading the flesh yeah and not the flesh leading the spirit yeah and i feel like the more you get into like your relationship with god i feel like the the prayers kind of change yeah but i feel like like now i kind of i would kind of feel bad like oh why would i say that you know but i feel like that's real Mm -hmm. you know and i feel like sometimes i want to feel bad for like praying some things but i'm like no like (laughs) yeah like this is what i'm feeling you know and i'm gonna tell you how i'm feeling i'm not gonna just rephrase it or say it in a different way i'm gonna tell you exactly how i'm feeling you know and sometimes i want to feel bad but i'm like no like that is what makes my relationship with god authenticity you Mm -hmm. know and it's so important to be authentic you know yeah yeah but with that like that a relationship with god is what's gonna keep you going you know Mm -hmm. like if you just come to church to come to church like eventually something's gonna happen and you're gonna be like you know what i'm not going anymore because something happened with this sister and you know if i would tell you the amount of things that i have gone through that would have pushed me away but i was like my eyes were not on that my eyes were on god and i'm like you know what like i'm just gonna move on from that Mm -hmm. you know and just stay focused because it's literally you and god and that's why it says that the path is narrow because yes we're churching with all these people but we don't know who's on the path yeah exactly and that's important because i feel like like we all look like we're going the right direction you know but only you know what you do on your own time Mm -hmm. you know yeah and you can try to fool people but i feel like god knows like you and god know and it doesn't matter what position you have it doesn't matter what you're putting out like Mm -hmm. god knows Mm -hmm. so you can fool whoever you want like just don't don't fool yourself you know like be authentic and god will literally get you through but i feel like that's that's the key to endurance you know like be real yeah, because I feel like it's tiring putting a front. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like that's what kind of like draining It is draining. And that's what kind of pushes you away because you're like, oh, let me start looking a certain way because that's what I see. Yeah. No, like start acting and looking a certain way because God put it in you, not because like you want to seem like if you are in the walk, yeah. you know, seem more holy or whatever the case might be like that is our goal to be more and more with God. But it's not. But it's it looks different for everyone. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like always know that you're supposed your walk is always different than everybody's walk. So that's why, like, don't force anything. That's why just like, you know, Crystal said, like, don't put up a front because God just wants your genuine heart. Yeah. You know what I mean? And he's going to work with that and he's going to help you and he's going to create your own path because you need to be your own self because you being you is what's going to help another person. Yeah. And I feel like you can come to God with this prayer that you've made up, you know, but I feel like, I mean, he's going to hear you, but he knows that it's not genuine. Right. You know? Yeah. No. Yeah. And so, I mean, you can try, I mean, the only one you're fooling is yourself, you know, but he knows. And I feel like that's what keeps me going too. like, why am I going to be pretend to be something I'm not, you know, like he knows everything right that's why i literally talk to him how i'm talking to y'all right now because i mean yeah there's there's reverence you know but he's my friend yeah he's literally my friend you know (laughs) and i talk to him like that i don't and i feel like that's the thing with prayer sometimes we want to structureize it or do this whole thing when it's like you're doing too much yeah just talk to god you (laughs) know exactly yeah be like yeah just talk to him like a hundred percent like just however it flows out to you and go from there and i feel like um another way to have that endurance is i would say like well um i guess you can say like it's not your full dependency but just like you know we were talking about in the previous or the last two 
sorry, the episode where we were talking about friendships. You know what I mean? Like, make sure that you surround yourself with those good people yeah. because those are the people that can help you to bring you to Jesus or those are the people that can help you carry your cross, you know? And that also helps you with your walk as well, you know, yeah. just having those genuine people. But then there is also moments where, like, you do need solitude, where you do need, where it's sometimes God distances you. Why? Because he wants you to know what it is to be alone with just him with you and God and that's it. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I feel like, uh, and the reason why I'm mentioning this is I feel like, because just like I said, like I felt it in my spirit that God said like someone is praying for you because that's why, that's why it's this thing is not going to happen because someone's literally praying for you. Like there's a spiritual war right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's why like now I'm seeing the importance of like, you know, if you have the opportunity to pray for others, pray for your friends, pray for someone that, you know, is struggling, like, or even if you don't know they're struggling, because sometimes we don't show that, you know what I mean? We don't show yeah. that we're struggling. So just pray for like all your friends, your family members, be intercessors. That's what we need to be. It's to have more intercessors because that way God can use you to be a blessing for others. And so you know, so that's why, like, I would say, you know, surround yourself with those good people, you know, have someone to help you out, have someone to talk to, you know, um, secondary to God. Yeah. So I just wanted to throw that no, out there. Yeah. Yeah. It's good to have a good group of people, you know, but it's also important to have the right people, yeah. you know, and yeah. I, that's really important, too, because mm -hmm. sometimes we can get uh, caught up in the wrong crowd and it just it honestly like. I feel like it stops you from growing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Exactly. And I feel like that's not somewhere where anyone would want mm -hmm. to be, you know? Like, mm -hmm. I want someone who's going to push me to be better, push me to do better, you know? Not keep me down, like, with guards up, you yeah. know? Like, not making me feel like, not me having to dim my light to be around a certain group of people, you know? Like, it's really important to just ask god to give you those people you know but god overall like and being real with god like he's gonna bring the right people to your yeah. life yeah that's what i love that when once you get close to god and make your make god your ultimate best friend he's going to like re reconstruct or you know move certain things move certain people you're just gonna see that sometimes it is drastic where it's like boom that person's not there the next day yeah. or sometimes there's gonna be healthy boundaries where it's like oh i need you to have your moment of solitude you know and you would just kind of go from there there's gonna be moments where it is a little bit uncomfortable you know not just the aspect of friends but also the aspect of many other things in life but i feel like just give it to god and he wants he's going to place everything just accordingly to help you out yeah but yeah, like and having those those friends will help you get through the hard times, too, you know, because I feel like there's so many hard times in this walk, you know, like and it goes with the warfare. But like you you have to stay focused, you know, and in the hard times, like obviously God talk to God, you know, but sometimes like you're going to need like. Because sometimes I feel like we're talking to God and we feel like he's silent. You know, we can't hear him. Mm -hmm. So it's good to have someone that's going to like pour into you, you know. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I'm so grateful for you. I tell you all the time, but I feel like you literally pour into me and lead me back to God. And it's just amazing, you know. And it's so it's good. It's good to have a village, you know, to to get you where you need to be, you know. Mm -hmm. But remember that God is the primary, pr the primary source and reading the Bible and just staying determined, staying on top of it, you know, because that's the only way that you're going to endure to the end. Yeah. You know, because yeah. there's so many distractions like a job can lead you away from God. A relationship can lead you away from God. A school can lead you away from God. Mm -hmm. Like, kind of like how I was talking about in the previous video, how we're walking like this, you know? And, like, any little thing, we're, like, already going this way. And right. if you don't... If you're not real and raw with God, you're just going to keep walking mm -hmm. that way. And you're literally delaying your process, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, because you allow a veil to get into your eyes and you're like, well, I don't see it. And so you yeah. try to, like, and ignore it. And, you and just you're like, well, your I'm not doing anything wrong, yeah. you know? But yeah. it's like, really analyze the situation. And, yeah. you know, I don't know. It just comes with being real also, yeah. you know? But 
stay on top of it and fast. I feel like fasting is so important, you know, like it literally, literally wakes you up in a sense, you know, because you're not letting your flesh lead you. It it like gives you wisdom, you know, it like gives you discernment, you know, you're like, I don't know. And I feel like I never realized the power of fasting until like literally right now (laughs) like i'm like because i feel like you're literally starving your flesh so then that helps you like you can see the bigger picture Mm -hmm. you can be like oh well my flesh wants to do this but is that honoring god right is that pleasing god right you know yeah so then that's when you literally have to deny your flesh like it says in the bible you know like pick what does it say which one i don't know it's it says something like deny your flesh to follow him you know and that's what we need to do you know in order to get to like a greater spot you know yeah we have to literally deny our flesh and that is hard you know and yeah like sometimes we don't want to be the bigger people sometimes we want to be petty (laughs) but it's not worth it right (laughs) and i feel like also another good thing is like don't focus so much on the blessing and i because like i feel like um let's put in the perspective of working out um some people would like to work out for health and some people like to work out because you just want to look good and that's fine you know you want to look good you want to be healthy but if you start just focusing on like oh i want to have you know for example i want to have a smaller waist or like bigger thighs or tone um arms or whatever if you start focusing on just that you're not going to enjoy the process Mm. because you're just going to be focusing like i don't see it i don't see it i don't see you just want to be focused on seeing the results seeing the results Mm -hmm. and it's just going to get tired and tired and tired but if you just forget about the results then and you just start loving moving your body working out just you know making it healthy then obviously there's a bonus of like oh yeah you're gonna look better or whatever the case may be but i feel like and that's the same thing with spiritually if you just start focusing of like oh like god like i know you're going to provide me with the house but if you can't start just focusing yourself on the house on the house and not enjoying the process of god molding you of making you a good administrator or having to go through the situation or uh, taking care of the home that you already have you know what i mean and so but if you start enjoying the process then i feel like you're not gonna be expecting the blessing yeah you know what i mean because i feel like in this walk you have to praise god if he gives it to you or if he doesn't give mm-hmm. it to you and, and we have to we have to be okay if we're not getting it exactly. you know exactly and we have to be okay if it's still in a couple years from now yeah because his timing is literally perfect it's and sometimes so perfect. our flesh doesn't understand that sometimes our flesh is like mm, i feel like i need it now and sometimes that happens if you see other people having it you know what i mean you're like god oh, like what is going on you know but i feel like it's because he knows your life and he knows your situation and he knows what's best for you Mm -hmm. that he's like literally just be patient and you will see who i am based on this based on you being patient you know so i feel like don't focus on so much of like what you're going to receive focus on like what you're learning from before you receive it you know what i mean so like for example like just like i said before getting that house or before having an upgrade with my car like Take care of the one that you have now. Love the one that you have now because there's people that don't have it. You know what I mean? And then also with relationships, love your single season because it's literally the best moment where it's just you and God. And then he's going to bless you with someone that's God center and your relationship is just going to be amazing with God and with the other person. You know what I mean? Like now you will be with the person that God intended you to be and it will be a blessing instead of like, a mistake i guess you can say yeah you know what i mean so i feel like just work on that and i feel like that's what has helped me because there's moments where i'm like just like i mentioned before like oh like financially i wish i was in this position or i wish i had already have this career wise or in um in a relationship i thought i would be already married or i see my other friends you know in relationships but you're just kind of like you know I guess you can say like, you know, the enemy brings you those thoughts, but then God just brings peace. And he was like, hey, trust me, 
yeah like i got you like don't Mm -hmm. worry about it and so now that's what has helped me to love the process to be like whoa like and i tell people like enjoy your single season or i like to give the advice of like hey like have moment of just you before you jump into another relationship because i know the benefits from it that i want to other people to get the benefits from it as well you know yeah but i feel like that's what has helped me to not because when you start focusing of like oh i'm gonna receive this i'm gonna receive that you start becoming desperate because like you start thinking it, you start fantasizing it Mm -hmm. that you want to desire like you actually want to feel it you Mm -hmm. know what i mean so i feel like desire the process desire where you are right now because that's what you have and i feel like if you get really like into the blessing maybe you are gonna make certain decisions that are gonna push the blessing further away because you're trying to get it now yes you know when it's not now Yes. You know, so then that's you delaying your plot, mm-hmm. your process because you're so focused on it, yeah. you know, and I feel yeah. like we do that a lot. Like we want it now. So then we go and do this whole thing and then we're literally further away. Yeah. Like and we think we're yeah temporary. We think yeah. we temporarily have the blessing, but it's not even. Yeah. Like, and that's kind of reminding me, just think of it as like chicken. Whenever it's cooked, you, let's say that you're so hungry, so hungry. But if you eat it before it's done, you're going to have consequences. It's either going to give you, um, how can I say, like you're going to get sick from it. You can get a disease from it, um, whatever the case may be. But if you just wait and be patient for when it's fully done, you're going to have the full benefits mm, from it. And why it's going to be good. And it's going <laughs> to be good. Like why do, would you want to eat raw chicken? Right. You know what I mean? Have like that full crispy how did you even mm, crispy how did you even think about chicken that's so funny <laughs> i guess i put it yeah i don't know i guess i said this example before to a friend mm. so that just came up chicken right now. is good <laughs> when it's fully cooked. when it's fully cooked you know because if you eat it before time mm. you're gonna have all the disadvantages of eating raw chicken you know what I mean? So just wait for it to be fully cooked, marinated and all mm, that. And you're gonna crispy. See crispy. <laughs> <laughs> see, that's what your blessing is going to be if you wait on God's yes, time. <laughs> yes. Good things take time. Y- yes. Mm-hmm. Good things take mm-hmm. time. That was good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, like this walk is, is, is hard mm-hmm. and you have to be real and you have to be determined, you know? And I feel like I've said that a lot, but maybe... The more I say it, the more it'll ingrain. Yeah. <laughs> like, you're not going to make it if you're not, like, putting in the work, yeah. you know, if you're not genuine yeah. and, like, really wanting it, you know? And I feel like the more that you see God, the more that you start to fall in love with him, you know? And it it's literally life-changing. It changes your whole imp- output on life. Like, you think different, you talk different, you know? And it's just it's really worth it like Mm -hmm. yeah it's hard but it's so worth it you know you come out a better person and you literally inherit like eternal life you know yeah Yeah. but like the process is hard and you have to be willing to sacrifice your own desires to give up your will for his will you Mm -hmm. know because his will is perfect and sometimes we don't see the bigger picture but he knows you know and even if it hurts to surrender your desires you know like it's worth it in the end and Mm -hmm. he's got you and he's gonna help you get through it you know but it just it's saying that it's literally worth it you know yeah exactly it really is and i praise god for it because um you know Like he has put me in certain situations where like, for example, my church, like I praise God for the church that I have now. It's not perfect, but it's where God is. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And God is in the church where God is. And that Mm -hmm. is the most important thing. And then we are the church. You know what I mean? Like us ourselves is a church. So it's a privilege that we get to serve God in that way of gifts that he has given us, uh, blessings that he has given us. I love to just give back in that aspect. You know what Mm -hmm. I mean? And I feel like, um, you know, we're on this walk together. You know, uh, we're not perfect. We literally have to always remind ourselves, like, have that endurance, have that endurance, because there has been moments where I just want to throw in the towel, but I just think of who God is and what Mm -hmm. he has done for me, where it's just kind of like, no literally i know what the world already gives like i've been through it and it i was just left empty and with god that emptiness is got gone so why should i throw that out the window just for temporary Mm. pleasure or temporary um how can you say like um fulfillment you know yeah 
And I'm going to go back to the, like, what Rebecca said, delight in your suffering, you know? Mm -hmm. You were talking about it a little bit. Yeah. Um, It goes back to that, like, he's working in us, you know, and we should delight that he's he's willing to heal that certain part of us that needs healing, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, it hurts and it sucks, you know, but it's good. It's really good. And I guess I'm kind of speaking to myself, like, I need to delight in the season that I'm in right now. Like, yeah, it seems like I'm not really getting anywhere, but he knows what he's doing, you know? And I trust that, you know? And I know that some days are harder than others. I wake up some days and I'm just kind of like, ugh, you know? But he knows what he's doing. And it's important to remember that, like, he's got it all figured out, you know? We just have to keep hanging in there, stay focused, and keep Mm -hmm. going, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly yeah but with that being said this is the end of the video so be sure to give it a like leave a comment if you have any questions or if you have any topics you would like for us to discuss and be sure to subscribe and turn on the post notifications so you get notified every time we post a a short or videos and also follow us on tiktok and instagram and for audio only we do have apple Podcasts and spotify with that being said we'll see you guys next time bye Bye, guys. guys